My name is Dan Katz. Um, I am the CEO and founder of Shorely Clean, the residential cleaning company up in New Jersey, the Jersey Shore area, and really excited to be here with you, Michael. Excellent. It's a pleasure. So where uh, where were you born? Where did you grow up? Up in Jersey or somewhere else? Yeah, so um, originally I was born in Brooklyn. Uh, my parents are actually immigrants. They came over from Latvia. Um, they used to be part of the Soviet Union. They came over when they were 18. I was born here, but formerly raised in New Jersey. Um, so basically from one years old up until 18 before I went to college, I was in New Jersey. And that's ultimately the reason why I decided to start the business there familiar with the area and highly recommends doing something in the area that you're personally familiar with. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's huge. If, I mean, kind of, we'll go along through the interview and kind of say some, some of those things, but uh, you, right before we, we were chatting before a few minutes ago um, and you said you're in Florida, but you're running it remotely. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that it's totally possible in the industry. Um, you could do this completely remote. You you don't have to be from that area, but like you said, it helps having a little bit of know-how and kind of connecting with the customer on that level. You know, if you can, if you get a call from somebody and they're like, oh, I'm on XYZ street and yeah. you're like, oh yeah, I know there's a Walgreens on the corner and stuff like that. That personal touch, you know, helps exactly. a lot. So what were, uh, what were some of your favorite things to do growing up as a kid? Oh, um, I guess just as a kid, riding my bike, um, sports was a big one. I played basketball and soccer growing up, um, so sports had a big part of me. And then I think like also I did wrestling and played chess as well. So my parents signed me up for everything. So kind of picked and chose different things, but I'd say sports, basketball, and soccer were my main ones. Um, but then when I went to college, went to a rah-rah school, a Big Ten school. So Really got into college, college sports, college football, and college basketball now too. Okay, what what school did you go to? Penn State. Penn State. All right. Okay. Um, were either of your parents business owners? Do you have anybody in the family that has you know any business acumen or you know aunt, uncle, anything like that that kind of guided you? Yeah, honestly, not so much. My parents were not business owners. My mom is a civil engineer. Um, my dad was a master's, has a master's in nursing and works for a hospital as a clinical analyst. So works on IT integrations for, for um, different healthcare institutions. Um, so not necessarily business owners in that sense. Um, actually, I'd say I was inspired to kind of have an entrepreneurial mindset when I was in college. Um, my major in college was actually biomedical engineering. Um, at first, I joined college. I thought I wanted to do research. I joined a research lab my freshman year and realized that I don't want to sit by myself for eight hours a day. And I actually like to talk to people. Um, what a concept. And so I got involved in different entrepreneurial programs in college. Um, and so there was a specific program called HESI, which was, stands for Humanitarian Engineering and Social Entrepreneurship. Um, so through that, you, I was working on a startup, um, startup venture in specifically targeted for low middle income countries. Um, so you're working on it and we were working to implement 3D printing in the healthcare industry. Um, and it was specifically in Kenya, the professor had lived there before. Um, and so the reason for that was after you work on it for a year, um, we actually spend, basically we call it a May master, but the summer um, month of May, and then I was able to extend so to spend this the, an entire summer on the ground in Kenya, like talking to our potential customers and doctors, nurses, other biomedical technicians to get an idea of the problem and how we can be there to support them. So I spent two summers back to back working on this like startup, super exciting. Um, and then I came back to the US, came back to school and back to my biomedical engineering classes. And I was like, what, what do I, what can I do from this experience? Ultimately I graduated during COVID um, joined the corporate world. I still have a nine to five job, W-2 job from nine to five, right? Um, blessed to be able to work remotely, but I have this entrepreneurial itch that I, I have never been able to really scratch. Um, and so that's kind of what I've been able to then find kind of booking Koala and, and my cleaning company is I've found this niche in the market of local service businesses. It's a lot easier to compete with other businesses locally than it is to, you know, when I previously had tried drop shipping, you're competing against products and people from all over the world. 
So it's a lot easier to compete in your local market is what I found right. um, by, you know, implementing a few technological tools um, like booking Koala and, and being able to use technology in other senses um, and basically just out, outperform your competitors in your local market that way. Sure. Awesome. Um, so growing up, what were, uh, sorry, what, what were, what did you want to be when you were younger? What, like, oh. When I was younger, I wanted to be a valet driver was my dream job because I loved really? cars and I wanted like when I was a kid, like I had a bunch of those little hot box, um, what are like Hot Wheels cars. Right. And so I would like take one, a new one with me, like or a different one with me uh, every single day, wherever I went. And my dream was to drive a different car every day. And then I ultimately I realized my parents were like, well, that's like a valet driver. You get to drive all, all sorts of people's cars. And I was like, that sounds like the best thing ever. Um, but I never ended up valeting. Um, and I'm probably at this point in my life, I, I don't know if I will, um, but that's okay. Um, that was that was my dream as a kid. I was really into cars as well. Okay, I'll let you know. It's not a, it's it's not all it's cracked up to be. I worked for two uh, separate companies, managed one, and it's yeah, you do you do get to drive a lot of different cars, but it, you you do see some kind of gross things from people and that you wouldn't really expect, but uh, you didn't really miss much. So, but yeah. hey, the business takes off. You could buy a new car, seven new cars, one for every day of the week. You know, sure, exactly. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so, you have your nine to five. What made you want to? I mean, you said you had the entrepreneurial itch that you could never scratch, but why did you want to start? Um, you know, a cleaning service of all things. Yeah. So I guess I started in the drop shipping space um, and like tried to do that for about a year. Again, trying to, again, in different side hustles, looking at that on, on the internet, try drop shipping and ultimately realized that this just isn't something for me. I'm really good at operations and putting together systems and procedures in place. Whereas for drop shipping, you really have to be a great marketer, creating different ad copies, visual ads, so photo ads, uh, video ads. And I was like, this just isn't my forte, right? I'm, I'm an engineer, but I'm a social engineer. So I again, that's where I going back to the processes and systems. And so as I continued to kind of look and decided to pivot away from drop shipping into something new, I was like, what if I actually started a business? And in this case, I said a local service business. Now, for me, I decided on cleaning. There's so many other businesses that you can do, right? I was also looking at like um, mobile car detailing or power washing or window cleaning or carpet cleaning. Like any of these are also similar niches. Um, I'll say I ultimately settled on regular good old residential cleaning because I found that that is the, at least it has the lowest barrier to entry to get into the market, sure. right? As opposed to power washing, you probably need to buy like, a truck with that has a few different like different power washers and tools and stuff right or carpet cleaning you need to have the special equipment and also the knowledge on how to do so whereas residential cleaning for me i was really finding other cleaners in the area that are great professional cleaners great residential cleaners they already have a few clients but they're not good marketers, right? They don't know how to market their services or they have a few gaps in their schedule. And so I was able to approach them and offer them, hey, you can keep your existing clients, but if you give me, update your availability within Booking Koala, right? On a week to week basis, you say, you're available Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or just on the weekends. I say, all I ask is that you keep your availability as up to date as possible and I'll book jobs for you for whenever you're free. Right. And I think that going going through this process that way made it a lot easier to enter the market as opposed to some of the other local service businesses that have a little bit of a higher barrier to entry. That being said, I think it's still certainly possible um, right in any one of those other in niches. Um, sure. I think that this was just the one that ultimately worked for me for what I was doing at that time. Awesome. And then when when uh, let's see here. Did I? So when did you start the business? What, how long have you had uh, Shorely Clean? Yeah, great question. So right now we're talking, it's April 21st, 2023. Um, I started the business, I formed the LLC in November of 2022. So about okay. six months ago, I formed the LLC in November, um, but I knew I didn't want to really, 
I want, didn't want to get customers at the end of the year because of like for tax purposes, it might just be confusing to get my first, get some revenue in December. So I was like, let me just get as much of everything in place. I did write out a business plan. Um, I did created a budgeted versus actuals like report for what I, my projections for the year. I think some of it may have been a little bit of paralysis analysis. There's a fine line between that, right? Especially when you're starting something new, right. where you're like you're doing all the prep work, but you're not actually doing it. Um, right. But then ultimately, I had my first customer at the end of January. So February and March were my two first full months of serving customers, right? Okay. And when you, that the end of the year, November, December, how much money did you invest to get started? What was roughly ballpark? Where, where What did you save up to get started? Yeah, so my ultimate goal was to launch this business under $1,000. I think it's okay. possible. I made some mistakes. Um, I ultimately put in $1,400 um, into the business before I was able to get that back as a return on investment. That being said, it wasn't $1,400 before I first saw my first dollar come back in. It was $1,400 of my money that I sure. pulled into it before I was able to take that money back out. Okay. And what did it go towards? What did it go towards? Um, so like, let's say, First month, November, December, I have I can I can pull it up, but November and December was like only like three hundred dollars. I formed an LLC, um, and then I started playing around with Booking Koala. I paid for Booking Koala for those first two months, um, and then I also use a lawyer service. It's called Legal Shield. I don't know if people have heard of it. Highly recommend. Um, it's for forty nine dollars a month. You get access to a lawyer, and you can ask all sorts of legal questions. So when I was starting out, that's I also use them. I, I pay them a subscription service on every month because I do have questions even now. But initially, it was also um, for them to review my contractor agreements, making sure that my decision to go and pursue 1099 contractors as opposed to W-2 employees was safe and sound. Um, so that was about $300 in the month of uh, November, December. Um, and then the the rest of like the $1,000 was really go going towards marketing. Is Google local service ads is what I started with and still the primary generator of all of my leads right now. Um, especially when you're getting started things, it takes time to, to really build up, right? Because not every single person that you pick up the phone is a viable lead or sometimes they're just calling for information and then they'll book like, give you book for a cleaning maybe a month or two months away, right? Sure. So especially when you're starting out, um, be under, I think it's important to be understanding that it's hard to hit the ground running and be fully booked out, right? The very first week that you start. But eventually, the ultimate goal is to acquire recurring customers, right? And that's what I've gone into this with that understanding of is the beauty of recurring customers is at your second cleaning or second service with that customer, your customer acquisition costs go to zero. So even if you spent $50 on that, you know, local service ad lead, for the first one, right, it eats into your profits. The sure. next time you are being able to pocket that money all yourself. So this is truly in that sense of business model that grows and grows in itself as you expand and grow your recurring clientele. Um, and so at the very start, and even now, I'm just funneling as much money as I can into marketing to just build up that recurring clientele of customers. Awesome. And then, so... You went to Penn State. Um, what is your experience? What's your background? Did you, you know, were you taking some business courses? Were you a business major? Or because you're you're an engineer, but yeah. any any business in that? Yeah. Um, so not formally in the engineering side, um, but I did mention I was involved in the entrepreneurship program. My minor was I did have a minor in entrepreneurship and innovation, and so through that I had a few classes that I took. So so a lot of fun, like different business classes, startup classes, had a few other different ideas and projects um, that I kind of did there. Like, um, again, you come up with an idea, everyone in the class comes up with an idea, you pitch it like Shark Tank style to everybody. And then the team finally formalizes into different groups and they work on that for like uh, a few weeks or even half a couple, or even half the semester or so. So I had a few okay. different experiences there. I always had come up with different ideas of like, I should do this or like whatever. And um, things that are much bigger, either technology businesses or just like product businesses. Um, but the thing with that is, 
But then there's a statistic that like what 99% of all businesses and startups end up failing, right? It's really hard to be yeah. successful. And so I was really like, yes, I can do and try to pursue one of these ideas. Um, but ultimately my desire to create a local service business was really just to be able to build something from the ground up fairly quickly. I'm not gonna make a million dollars and retire from this business. But my goal for this is to just get an understanding of how a business operates from like the CEO figure of being able to manage everything, right? And I sure. think that ultimately I'll be able to use this personal experience um, into the future for the next big thing that I anticipate becoming a, a part of. If that makes sense. Awesome. Awesome. Absolutely. Little more focus towards the business for hiring. Are you real quick? Are you doing the independent i think you mentioned independent contractor versus employee what you want with the ic's yes so all my okay. all my are ic's yep perfect talk to me about your hiring funnel what does that look like what's what are your best practices for that um yeah good question so right now at least and when i started um the vast majority of all my cleaners have come through indeed so i created a business accounts business profile and in indeed um, and put together like a quick description. Um, I actually stole it from another really successful franchise business um, that I'm sure I'm sure you've heard of uh, if I say their name. Um, Go ahead. It's uh, made this Neil's Neil Parikh's made this. Um, okay. So he has the, the franchise business, and so I was able to basically find his uh, thing on Indeed, like. So from one of his other places. And I was like, this is actually a great description. So basically kind of made it my own just because I think it's also really important in your description and your advertisements, especially in your initial conversations with your cleaners and whenever you're hiring someone new is to bring the energy and bring excitement, right? Like you're not a typical cleaning company. You want to be able to stand out from them and from amongst the other competition from like who else could they work for? Because a lot of the times I've worked with different cleaners and that have come on board with me and they haven't always had positive experiences working with cleaning company business owners. So really, I think from the start, I want to set myself apart, almost like to have more of a startup feel of like, you know, we're all in this together and I'm here to support you and we're here to make money together as opposed to you're my employee. I'm going to give you jobs and that's right. not only to be happy, right? So I think that's like an important way to level set expectations from the start. So anyway, so I mentioned I start on Indeed. Um, so that's kind of my initial hiring funnel. And I do not pay for any ads on Indeed. I know there's a paid paid level um, where you can have your um, job description be visible to more people. I've never paid for it. I find that I'm, I'm sure it would work, um, but ultimately I still have different people and applicants trickle in, you know, maybe two, anywhere between two and five per week, depending on the week. Obviously when they apply, I have a few extra questions that I've inserted myself. Um, so they need to have their own transportation, right? Uh, or vehicle to and from each site. They need to have their own cleaning supplies and equipment. And I also ask if they need to have at least two years of professional cleaning experience. And the last one is, if they are working alone or if they have a partner or team that they're working with. I find that that's the most difficult is I have a lot of solo cleaners. Right now I have six cleaners in total and only one of them is a partnership or team that works together. Obviously for bigger houses, you wanna send two or plus people and it's sure. kind of hard to right now navigate that because I'm trying to build and, and hire more people, but everyone that I'm, I've been hiring is just individual individuals. Okay. So, People apply on Indeed, I give them a call, or actually what I do is I send them a message on Indeed, and I also inform them that there's an additional requirement of general liability insurance, which comes out to be $80, $90 a month for coverage. And if they're okay with that, I say, give me a call, and then we'll talk. I'll, then if they give me a phone call, I'll pick up. It's like a phone initial phone screening just to learn a little bit more about them. No more than 10 minutes long is that initial conversation. Afterwards, I'll send them an application. So I know they applied on Indeed, but that's really the funnel. Um, but now I wanna capture and standardize all the information I'm capturing for all of my applicants. 
So I have a formal application on my website that I send them. It's really easy to fill out. They can do, I say you can do it on your phone. It's a lot of the same questions that I mentioned on the initial screening from Indeed, as well as their you know, address, their full name, their email address, their phone number, just so I capture that stuff. Um, as well as I like to ask, how much would they price for a initial deep clean for a two bed, one bath, or for a recurring clean two bed, one bath, or what, what's their desired hourly rate? Um, and anything other information that they would like to share, just to get a little bit of a more of a feel of like, what are they, what are they, how much money do they want to be earning? Um, so I want to make sure that we're on the same page there as well. Once they fill out that app formal application, I'll then schedule an interview, probably about 45 minutes long. Um, again, I'm not in the area, so I've been do presenting these all as Google Meets, you know, virtual interviews. So with camera on, just the chance and opportunity to us to talk, get to know one another, ask a few more questions. Um, I do then ask typically for references, um, depending on how I feel about the, the potential applicants. I haven't called everyone's references if I feel really strongly about some of them. But if I'm ever on the fence, references are a good way to really decide, okay, which direction should I go in, um, especially after speaking with them. Um, and after that, if I'm okay and references check out, I'm confident in this cleaner, then I basically send them the onboarding package. So the onboarding package is sent over email. They basically make an account in Booking Koala. They connect their Stripe accounts. I have a contractor agreement for them to sign. Um, they have to fill out a W-9 form for tax purposes. Um, I do a background check on them. And I also ask for a copy of their driver's license as well. Excellent. So very thorough. Very thorough. You want to make sure everything checks out and get the best for your company. Awesome. Yeah. Transitioning a little bit towards marketing side. Again, what are your strategies for marketing and what are some of those successful tactics that you've been using? I know it's it's a little hard being so new, but I know you touched base a little bit on uh, GSA already. So maybe yeah. elaborate some on that. Yeah, so I'd say my primary marketing right now is Google, like you said, LSA, local service ads. I highly recommend for anyone that's starting out to get set up on that as fast as possible because it is a process. It does take a few weeks for your accounts to get verified and for them to review everything that you need to be able to get started. So it is a process, just start earlier the, the better. Um, but once you're up and running, you basically create a budget, let's say like $1,000 a week, which again, at the very start can sound really intimidating. Um, however, your what's nice about it is it, they're not going to just blow through your budget like Facebook ads. Um, what the way it works is you only get you only pay per, for each lead. Whenever you pick up the phone, it's it's a phone call right from Google local service ads that they're sending you, and so you're paying for each phone call you get. Sometimes if you're paying a thousand bucks a week, you might only get two phone calls, and each phone call is about let's say twenty five to thirty five dollars, right? Depending on the market that you're in. So for me, if it's $35 a phone call, I only get two of them, that's $70, right? So it's not going to say you, your budget was $1,000. These two phone calls are $500 each, right? That's, that's what I say is the nice part about it is it's like, it's, pay, it's almost like a pay-per-click ad, right? Pay-per-call, um, pay-per-lead in the sense is what it really is. But aside from Google LSA, um, that's really my primary marketing strategy. I know some other businesses, business, business owners have had a lot of success in Facebook. Um, so I have been posting, I've created a Facebook profile for my business and I've been posting in different Facebook groups. Um, I'll be honest, it's, I think that just takes time and momentum to build on itself. Sure. Um, I haven't really had a big output of success that's come out of that yet. Um, but I think it's also about Keep, keep pushing, keep posting, be aware of the rules of the Facebook group, um, because a lot of them do have rules. You can only post or advertise your business on Wednesdays or X number of times per week. So I basically created an Excel sheet that has all of the different Facebook groups. There's probably like 50 of them in my area, one for each town or so, right? Or mom and dad groups. And then the, the day that I last posted and then the day of the week that it's a lot, you're allowed to post. So if it's like only Wednesdays, I filter and I say, oh, these are the five groups I can post on a Wednesday and I'll just post in all of them, right? So just an easy way to get organized is what I do. And then the other thing, the last thing I'll say for marketing is also cold calling. Um, that's something I haven't done before, but I was um, decided to, to give it a try here. 
So I got a list of about a thousand realtors in my area and just started picking up the phone, put together a script real quick, basically saying, hey, um, are you, you know, I, I, and it's this, is this whatever realtor or right, just confirm their name and be like, well, my name is Dan, I'm the owner of X, Y, and Z company. And I was calling to ask if you already work with a cleaning service or be interested in learning more about our referral program, right? So do they already work with a cleaning company? Sometimes they don't and they'll take your name down. They might not have a job for you right then and there, um, but it's also about planting the seed for future connections that they'll then, you know, maybe three months from now, they might give you a call and say, hey, there's, some, there's an opportunity here. Or what you can ask if you call the actual office and you call the office for X, Y, and Z Realty and say, hey, I'm, I'm Dan, the owner of this cleaning company. I wanted to ask, how can I be added to your approved vendors list? Um, I just got added to my first approved vendors list actually earlier this week, which was super exciting. Um, awesome. Basically, again, that way all of the realtors or anyone that's part of that organization now gets formally recognized. They're in your, your company is on their list that if they're like, I need to find a cleaning company, then their admin will say, all right, cleaning company, this is, this is it. So this is the company for your call. So you're already kind of approved in that sense. Um, it does take a, a while to do that, but definitely it recommends trying to explore that avenue. That's awesome. I mean, I, from all the several business owners that I've talked to or done interviews with, few, if any, have mentioned, you know, reaching out to their local realtors and trying to get a list and building that up. I mean, it, it for sure, great way to do it. Yeah. That property managers, stuff like that. Just yep. much, as much as you can have in the tank marketing wise, the better for sure. And it's not really costing you much because you're, you know, you're calling yourself. You're not spending money on those Facebook ads or, or whatnot. Yeah. There are things that work that are free that, yep. you know, and every area is different. You know, so there could be some places where door to door flyers are still working or, you know, uh, posting in the local newspaper. It just, mm -hmm. it depends on where you live and kind of the demographic that also lives there. So yeah. And yeah, it's part of it is also trying to figure out where, where are your ideal customers? Where is it? Where do they, where do they spend their time? Where do they hang out? Like, is it on Facebook or are they at home? So if you can knock on their door and get them at home uh, or sure. do they read the newspaper, right? Are you targeting the more like geriatric almost population, right? 50s, 60s and all right. that. You read the newspaper. So you have to decide for yourself. Where is my target audience? Where do they spend their time? And how do I get in front of their eye eyeballs when they're there? Right. Absolutely. So New Jersey, big population. What makes you stand out, especially being so new? What are you doing to stand out from your competitors? What are you trying to do differently to be like, hey, I'm the new guy on the block, but I'm not leaving? Yep. Um, so part of that was also, I suggest when everyone starts do like a competitive analysis on their market, wherever they chose. So, you know, go through, figure out like the list of all the cleaning companies, at least that you think you would be scared of, right? So like there's mom and pop shops all around. There's also individual cleaners. They just have their a business card or a phone number, but they don't have a website. I'm talking about find all of the cleaning companies that are like 50 plus reviews on Google or 20 plus reviews on Google. They have websites, they're established, right? Or even like some type of merry maids that are franchises of who are you really going to be end goal competing against that might give you trouble. So honestly, I, when I started out, just call all of them, call all of them, figure out like their pricing, understand what, what they're charging in this area, like pretend to be a customer. And ultimately I found that also like, probably seven, eight out of 10 times. No, they don't pick up the phone. So that's really the first thing that you can do. Um, again, as you're going through the process, um, picking up the phone is a big, big one because I've had customers call me. Um, they don't decide, oh, I'm too expensive. Then the next day they call me back because no one else answered them. So they had to come back to me because I'm the only person that's actually picking up the phone. So I'll say that's a big one is answer your phones. Is That's part of customer service is providing the best customer experience for them. Um, and then besides that is also, I looked at all the websites and I am the only company in my county that has an online booking form, which means that everyone else, you can go online, you can submit like a lead form and say, this is my information, this is what I want. 
but no one else can you actually book online the way Booking Koala has enabled me to build out my website and do. Um, so that's also part of part of my uh, unique offering, especially when I talk to customers or recurring customers, as I say, this is great. Um, like you're going to have an online profile, you can log in. If you ever in the future for your recurring cleans need to adjust your cleaning from let's say a Tuesday to a Wednesday, you can pull it up on your phone and all of our cleaners availability is linked up into the system. So you can do that yourself. Of course, you can give me a call and I can do that for you, but I'm just letting sure. you know that we have this feature built out for our customers for that reason. And they love that. Awesome. And then that's that's huge. Having that online portal as a customer and just mm -hmm. knowing that, hey, something came up, family emergency, got to go to the vet, whatever. But I have my yep. clean, hop on there. You know, it could even be an hour before the clean and you can schedule it. Or if you block it from your end, you know, they'll still call you, but there is that option to do that, which yep. is which is huge. Um, talking, let's talk a little bit about revenue. So where, I mean, you, you, you started the paperwork in November, but you know, you got to yourself and you're like, I'm not going to do anything till the new year yep. Fi finance wise, you know, taxes, you didn't want to deal with that. What revenue wise or January end of January, you said was your first booking. So and that first booking till now, what where are you at revenue wise in total? Yeah, in total revenue wise. Um, so when I actually had to file my taxes or file the tax sales tax for the first quarter of the year, and I had to pay total revenue was sixteen thousand dollars for January to March for twenty twenty three. So basically. February and March, you did February 16K. So, yeah, so I got it. It was about $5,000 in revenue the month of February. And then I had about $10,000 in revenue the month of March. And then like a thousand bucks back in January. Yep. Okay. And what about, what are you projected to do by the end of this year? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so my ultimate goal, so this now that we're in April, so last month I hit 10,000 in revenue. This month, I quite honestly, I haven't been working as hard, especially on the different marketing strategies or calling back customers as I have been in the month of March. So this month of April, I'm predicted to dip down. Probably I'm going to end out around $8,000 in revenue. Um, but my margins are going to be much higher. My margins back in March, I made I had ten thousand in revenue. My margins, net margins, was ten percent um, profit for the company. Whereas I'm suspecting my margins this month in April will be closer to twenty. Um, just last month, I just spent also a lot more on Thumbtack um, for marketing, which didn't end up really getting anywhere for me. Um, spent money on some Facebook ads, which didn't get get end up any going anywhere for me. So ultimately, again, as you build the business, I'm getting smarter with how I'm spending my money and that's making me more efficient, trim the fat, and that way I get, get a little bit more um, more net margins. Um, in terms of annually, annual revenue, my projections. So let's see, um, I'm hoping to build it out. I mean, by the end of the year, I would love to have, let's say $30,000 of monthly recurring revenue um, with about 20% margins. Um, so 30,000 then, Probably, probably I'm, I'll, I'll probably end up around two hundred thousand dollars. I'll anticipate two hundred thousand dollars for the first year as I kind of scale it up to thirty thousand dollars a month. Yeah, sure. Which two hundred k in your first year? That's that's massive. That's big. That's yeah. and it's doable. It's totally doable, especially when you're focusing like yourself so much on, like you said, trim the fat, mm -hmm. get rid of what doesn't work, stick to what works. Yeah. Yeah double down on what's working and just building that fantastic team to grow with you yeah. that is totally achievable. and we hope you get it even sooner by the end than the end of the year so yeah. we'll we're gonna we're gonna see how that works out for you um so you already mentioned standing out from competitors that you're you're the only one with this booking form online or the ability to book online yeah why do you why do you think that is well, I'll say that's another reason I decided to go into the local service business space is that a lot of these owners and operators are people that have had this business for 
10, 20, 30 years, 40 years, right? They're just the older, older population. They're local to the area. They've been doing this for a while. Some of them still do it on a piece of paper, right? They, or they have really antiquated techniques of bookkeeping and sure. keep, keeping track of cleaners' schedules. So honestly, um, it's 2023, it's time for an upgrade for everybody. And I, that's kind of right. what I saw the opportunity in the market is I can come in and spend less time running the business because of all of the streamlined technology that I can use to my advantage to kind of manage everything um, because it might take me half or even a third of as much time to run the business as it does for the other, other businesses in the area. Um, and so if I, I can do that, first of all, spend less time running the business than what they currently do. If they're doing it on like an actual sheet of paper, right? Making an availability on a sheet of giant like sheet of paper or a poster, um, which I know some of them do. And uh, also have better customer service. That's, those are the two, two paths to success to outperform like my competitors here. Um, awesome. Excellent. Um... A little bit of timing here. What when you started in November versus now? How much were you putting in time wise towards the business then versus now? Are you about the same? Are you less? Are you more? Yeah, great question. Um, I'll say from like January, February, March, it's probably doing like definitely like two average of two hours a day, two three hours, probably close to twenty hours a week ultimately. Um, Kind of just doing it on the side in the mornings and the afternoons and again you're constantly almost like on your phone i want to be super responsive for any potential customers and also all of my cleaners um, as the business owner um however this month i've definitely taken uh, a back seat i've been exploring a lot of different avenues and i find that i think for myself i almost have a little bit of analysis paralysis this month because i was like what do i what do i do next right like i was able to build it up i hit ten thousand dollars in revenue in the in the first second month of uh, serving customers, like what what should I be doing next? Like, should do I need to be managing my bookkeeping? Do I need to set up QuickBooks next, or do I need to go and create a marketing CRM like with Go High Level, or do I go and spend the thousand dollars in profit that I made on postcards, right? For do an e every door direct mail campaign, or do I go back to Facebook ads and try to start small? So there's there's like so many different almost unique avenues, or do, do I go to optimize my SEO, right? There are all these different things that I've been spending this past month, not to say I haven't been working on the business, I have in that sense that I've been learning about all of these different avenues. Um, but I think now I have this like realization, like yesterday I'm like, I've learned about like these six different things. I need to decide, make, it's like this decision time, it's crunch time. I need to decide what do I do next and how do I kind of, actually action as opposed to kind of learning about all these. Um, so honestly, going back to your question, I would say I'm still spending maybe a little bit less this, this month because I feel like I can take a deep breath. I was like, wow, this is like actually working. I was actually able to build up recurring customers. I had about $3,000 of booked revenue for this month before the month even started, the month of April. So I can almost take a step back, be like, okay, this is working. I don't need to like be as crazy, but I still want to figure out like, how do I keep going and continue scaling from there? Sure. Awesome. Excellent. Um, is this your only business or did you have something previously? Do you plan on, you know, starting something else in the near future or, yeah, or anything question. like that? This is my only business. Um, like I mentioned, I do work uh, W2 job. I work for Fortune 500 company in healthcare, love my job, and also enjoy the path that it's taking me. Um, so for now, this is the only thing I'm doing. This is my only business. I do anticipate that eventually, like I said, I'm not married to cleaning. I'm not married to my, to my business. Um, I think that my ultimate goal right now is I actually want to pursue a uh, medical device sales within my W-2 job. Um, it's an actually an extremely lucrative industry. You put in a few years as an associate, but you climb up and you can be making really good money within a few years that way. And I think there's also a really valuable and transferable sales skills that I think will be able to kind of propel me into my career, whether I decide to stay corporate or even decide to go and build another business myself. So I'm targeting transitioning into sales, let's say in the next like six months or so. And so started this business um, while I'm have some more flexibility working remotely. 
Ultimately, my goal with the business is to onboard a VA in offshore virtual assistant within the next six months that can manage the day-to-day -day operations so I can take a step out. Um, and if I decide to switch jobs to go into me medical device sales, where it's a lot more demanding, I'll be basically in the operating room seven in the morning, five days a week, like 16 hour days. I'm not going to be able to be in front of a computer to like enter bookings into a system, right? Sure. So, um, I'll be able to have the business as a cash flow machine, even if it's not growing, it's at least being able to be maintained of wherever it's at at that point, like six, nine months into the business after like, say this year. Awesome. So, I mean, you're, you kind of already touched on my next question. Where do you see the business in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, I, that was I don't, five to 10 years is crazy to think about um, because I don't even know what, where I'll be or what I want to do in five to 10 years. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, I pursue, pursue myself um, in that med device sales role. And I'm also created this business, this successful business. Um, this might be something that I just continue to have as an asset um, as it cash flows, right? Would be great if there's an opportunity to sell potentially again in that five to 10 year window, then I think that could be great as well. And use that money as seed money for either my next business that might be closer within the realm of healthcare, right? Because I think ultimately I want to be in the healthcare space. I want to start a business in the healthcare space, but right now I'm just learning how a business operates, period. Um, so ultimately the end goal, I think, again, not, not to say that I'm only doing this for like a quick buck because that's not what I'm necessarily doing. I'm doing sure. this to learn how the business operates and then eventually take these learnings to scale it into something that, has a larger potential, you know, um, addressable market, right? Because I can only make so much money serving um, house cleaning in my area. I'd have to expand geographically or the services I'm offering. Um, but I think that I want to be in healthcare and eventually I'll take this into that, that future path as well. What if, uh, what's, what's a number that would get you, what's the number of business you'd be doing to get you away from healthcare and full time here? Like, what's that enticing number where you're like, you know what? Why, why work for somebody else? I'm gonna, yeah, I'll tell I'm you. just gonna be here. I'll tell you right now is my partner and I. So apparently, I know a few years ago everyone has said. So there's there's a study that's been made that's been done that said years ago, I think ten years ago, that seventy thousand dollars is up, like uh, the relationship between your income and happiness. After seventy thousand dollars, your happiness plateaus. Like if you make eighty thousand dollars versus seventy thousand dollars, your happiness doesn't change that much, right? I'm sure, sure. You, may, you may have heard of that. Um, that study is um, now at this point, I think it's over ten years old, and they actually just did another study. Um, which now shows that if you compare again your income versus your happiness, your it only plateaus at an income level of five hundred thousand dollars, as opposed to the previously seventy thousand dollars. So you can continue to make more money up to five hundred thousand dollars until your happiness plateaus. That being said, I think for me, I'm all about being a lot happier. Um, and so I'll say if I can get $500,000 of total take home pay, um, which again, which pretty hard to do, right? Especially if we're talking at much bigger scale, it's probably going to be closer to like 10 to 15% margins, right? So then you're going to have to have a $5 million business in house cleaning, um, which I know King of Maids, you, um, Philip has done a great job. I don't know if he got there, like 5 million is, is really, really big. Um, so that's, that's what I have to share. I don't know as a, when it comes to King of Maids, I don't, we don't really talk about that. I know he's hit some incredible numbers quickly as yeah. well. Um, so that's actually something kind of curious about might have to ask him, but, uh, it is doable, but it's crazy that how 10 years ago, the first study came out till now, it's almost 10 X yeah. that that number has almost 10 X and, you know, looking back 70,000 back then. Yeah, it, it was so much stuff has changed in the last 10 years and 500 is, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty shocking. I didn't yeah. think it would be that high. But at the same time, it's also not because 
you can, there is so much of that gap in between there. Um, but again, what, like you said, once you hit after that 500 K that that's so much money where it's like, what do I, can you what do I can you can you be really spending forty to fifty k a month that quickly? Like once you have everything you want, like I don't know, everybody's different, need, right? And it's not to say that I need to be spending forty thousand dollars a month when I'm there, right. but I think it's also you know I also want to be able to think about the long term vision, and you know I everyone talks about their financial independence number, right? Of like what do I need to be able to actually sit back and retire? And not only do I want to build up this business that has cash flow. But I'm also trying to create some type of assets. Um, it's just starting to get involved in real estate as well. So I think that there's there's other things to be said about you know where your cash flow or where that five hundred thousand dollars is coming from. It doesn't have to be just from this business, but I think that's kind of an all inclusive thing from all all things I'm doing combined. Sure. I, um, I mean, everybody can kind of already guess. I'll we're. How long have you been using Business Portal? Were we the first software that you uh, went with when you thought about this business idea? Have you tried anything else? Uh, yeah, so yeah I, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I did look into a few others. I know like some of your big competitors, Zen Maids and then Launch 27 um, are the two big ones, uh, at least the, on, up to my understanding. Um, I think when I was doing the initial research, just I kind of like talked to a few people, business owners, or like, again, read different articles online of comparing each of those different softwares and like even the support that's that each of them have for their potential customers. Um, and I found that Booking Koala has just the largest community. Um, so that's kind of what drove you me to you guys from the very start. So I did start with Booking Koala. I got an account in November. That's also the first November and December. I was playing with the account, even though I didn't have customers or cleaners, just to get myself familiar and like reading all the different really helpful, like how to like all those articles. That's great for people starting out. Um, at this point, like I don't really want to leave unless you guys hopefully don't give me a reason to leave because all my stuff is in there. I'm comfortable. I know how to get around. Right. I have yeah. you guys. It's great because on my phone. Um, I really recommend you can basically get set up a, an app as a link to uh, any website. And so I've done that for a booking, the booking form itself. So if someone calls me when I'm not sitting in front of my computer, I can just press what looks like an app on my phone and it takes me already logged in. It's a web app, right? So it takes you into uh, the booking page so I can quickly do this and book a customer when I'm on the go. Um, so right now I'm, I'm very comfortable and it's, you guys have been great. Your support team has been great and nothing but good things to say about cooking. Koala. Excellent. Um, so what kind of, you into, uh, and, and kind of why, like what, what, again, yeah, I mean, you already kind of mentioned it, um, the community group and the support, were you looking at the competitors and being like, it's the same, but not, and I don't know, kind of if you can elaborate more with that. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned the community group. I know the Facebook page, like uh, there's also Facebook pages for like Zen Maids and Launch 27. And I think you guys have like the biggest total number of volume of people that are part of it, right? Obviously like whatever, you can make bots or they might not all be real people, but that, that was kind of an indicator for me that, okay, people are using this and also right. participating in here. Um, the other thing is, uh, honestly, like I also read about Philip's story, right? For King of Maids that he found this as an opportunity and gap in the market and he did cleaning himself. And I, I almost related to that, like personally, that I was like, wow, like he created this product because he made it for himself. Um, and so I think that I was like, okay, if he has a cleaning company or he had a cleaning company, he knows exactly what he would have wanted. And so he was able to build it out in that sense. And that's, that's something that stood out to me, um, as well as just the support team. The first like week that I was learning, I was constantly like posting in the Facebook page I mentioned, and even just in the like emailing your, your support at bookingkuala.com. And uh, you guys were really responsive, really helpful. And I know I started with a free trial and I was like, okay, at the end of the free trial, I was like, am I going to do this? I was like, yeah, I think this is going to work. Um, so I think it was just a combination of all of those things. I don't know off the top of my head, features wise, I honestly don't remember if there are specific features that you have that others don't or vice versa. Um, I went with the, the 
is it called the growing plan? The one that's $57? Yeah, the middle one, yep. And so that's the middle plan. That's what I've started with and what I've stuck with. I do like that you have like an opportunity for the, the, the larger one. Um, uh, it's a little, a little bit more expensive, but I was like, okay, I, I, if I ever decide that I need to transition to that, I like that they can support that, but it's not something or super expensive that I need to do from, from the start. Sure. Excellent. And uh, so feature-wise, what are one or two of your favorites? Yeah. Feature-wise, um, some of the ones love that you guys have, first off is clocking in and out um, for all of our cleaners. Um, sometimes we have hourly jobs or we, again, pay based on the amount of time. The customer pays based on how long they're there. So it's super effective to be able to know how long they were there for, as well as just I get a notification for whenever the cleaners clock in and clock out. So it's a good way as an operator to keep track of your employees and your cleaners that way. Um, not that I'm like, again, need to micromanage them, but I just right. get a notification. I know that they're there. It's on time. That's that's great. Um, and with the other part of that, I also really like the uploading job photos. Um, that is a requirement that we do. So I say for all of our customers that we do document the cleaning process. So we do take before and after pictures. Um, all my cleaners, they take before and after pictures. They upload it into the, into the platform for that individual booking. And then I'm able to go in and I've actually made some before and after photos for online marketing and promotional purposes as well, based on that. I do ask the customer also if we're allowed to use the pictures for online marketing and or promotional purposes. And if they say yes, I have an extra like checkbox that I can mark in there, um, which I like the, the customizability of the form itself. So that's, that's been really helpful. I've added a few extra questions there. Um, and then the very last thing I'll mention is the uh, customizability of the website. I'm not a web designer. Um, I don't know HTML or any of the other programming languages. I also am not like well-versed in SEO, but I think that your ability to customize web, the website, um, it's for the fact that you guys are an operational CRM is pretty dang good. Um, and you know, I've sent my website to a bunch of different people to the point where they were like fairly impressed that I was able as a business owner to put this together without having any website web design experience. So you, you guys made a pretty good experience that way. Awesome. We love to hear that. So out of those, or maybe none of those that you mentioned, what's one that you can't live without? What's one I can't live without? Um, I'd say definitely the clock in, clock out feature. Um, that like that just makes me um, puts me at ease with every booking that I know that like people are they're there or after they finish and then immediately after the cleaner clocks out, I'll reach out to the customer. That's the way I know that they're done. I'll reach out to the customer, either text or call, depending on my relationship with them, and just say, hey, like heard I. Heard that they left like how did everything go that's also part of that customer service experience making sure that they feel that everything was taken care of to the way that they were expecting it to awesome excellent um what's one feature that you wish we had that we don't and why I'll tell you that right now. And I was actually talking, uh, going back and forth with one of your customer service reps uh, like the last day or two about this. And I was like, this would be really helpful, not just for me, but for other business owners. So for any time that you have a team, so you have cleaner A and cleaner B, and they can both clean individually, but they can also be partnered up as a team, right? So Cleaner A puts in their availability into this portal and Cleaner B puts in their availability into the portal. And so I can always book them as individuals based on their availability. But I think what would be really helpful, which you guys don't have the ability to do right now, is for whenever they have overlapping availability, then that's when the team shows it to be available. Um, right now, if you have a team, you can book the team, but that just means that the individuals aren't available. So you can't double book them. Um, right? right, but you don't necessarily have that, I guess, trickle down or trickle up effects for merging the availability of the individuals into the team. I see. Okay. Well, if you already talked about it, I'm sure they wrote it down and we're going to be discussing that and seeing how we can get that implemented. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that so the last thing I'll say on that is it's super helpful. I think just in terms of when you're trying to schedule team availability, like you know, okay, this is a bigger house. I need to send two people, right? And you're on the phone with the customer, and you're trying to figure out timing wise, like when can I go? 
Right now, I have to go into both of those cleaners schedules to figure out when are they both concurrently available, as opposed to just being able to enter the provider, like the team, and then it shows all of their availability that way. So, sure. Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. Final question here. Whoever's going to be watching this, if they're on the fence, you know, about starting, what are some words of encouragement or some advice that you could give somebody that's maybe tossing the idea around in their head about starting something? Yeah, I think you should just do it. Um, I think it's kind of one of those things of rip the Band-Aid off, form the LLC, create your separate bank accounts and, and credit card and debit card and set it up the right way, but just start. Um, it's sometimes, like I said, there's paralysis analysis and some of the things you do, you see so many different people posting about like their success and in all their different avenues and businesses on the internet. And you're like, wow, like I almost like shiny object syndrome. A lot of people experience of try this or learn about this and learn about this and learn about that, but they don't actually go in and di dive in and do anything. And so that I say, you just need to rip it and just go for it. Right. And um, worst thing is you fail and that's okay. Failure is okay. I tried drop right. shipping. I failed in that, but ultimately it led me to find my cleaning business and you might fail as your, as a cleaning business, but you might be really successful in some other Avenue, right? Somewhere else. And I think it's all about the journey that it takes to get there definitely make calculated decisions, make a decision. Okay. I'm going to spend X amount of money or X amount of time, be reasonable, but also be aggressive to, to, to be realistic of how much you need to dedicate to see if this is going to work and then just, just go for it. And then, you know, make incremental adjustments as you go on to see what you can do better. And that's kind of what I'll say. Just, just go for it. Awesome. Well, Dan, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time and the interview, and we hope your business flourishes and takes off and you hit all the numbers that you have for yourself for this year, the next year, and all the years to come. Awesome. I appreciate that, Michael. It's been great talking to you. Of course.